Uh, this is a demonstration of how uh, independent components analysis reconstruction for the purposes of removing artifacts such as eye movement and creating a new time series actually distorts the phase and time differences between channels. The EEG is made up of, uh, or uh, its physiological origin, uh, is the summation of synaptic potentials produced by pyramidal neurons in the cortex. And the, some of the physiological factors are things like uh, the conduction velocity in the white matter, uh, synaptic rise times, synaptic delays, synaptic integration time. Uh, and those particular physiological features are adulterated and distorted by the use of independent components analysis, or ICA, to reconstruct a new time series after uh, removing some of the components that are related to an artifact. And for example, an eye movement artifact may, uh, with the 19 channels, there may be two or three uh, components that uh, represent the eye movement and one uh, eliminates those two or three independent components. And then with the remaining uh, 16 or 17 independent components, one then uh, reconstructs 19 channels of a time series, and that regression process of reconstructing something basically from nothing uh, is at the price of distorting the time differences in phase between the channels of the human EEG, the original data, and it produces a new time series that has adulterated the original time series and therefore invalidates any subsequent analyses of coherence and phase. It is no longer a valid time series. It's actually uh, de decouples or uh, disconnects the uh, subject's brain uh, from uh, this new time series. They're really not even related to each other. And there's a serious warning. This is a well-accepted uh, fact. The, uh, the people that have developed independent components analysis at the University of California, San Diego, and the EG lab are, are openly uh, discussing this and admit that there is a phase distortion by uh, this reconstruction process. And so the purpose of this demonstration is to uh, show how one can verify that uh, the phase and time differences have been distorted. This data comes from a, a workshop that I gave on August uh, 22nd to 26th in Adelaide, Australia, uh, at the Applied Neuroscience Society of Australia, ANSA, in which one of the participants uh, uh, wanted to have verification that there is phase distortion, and I asked that uh, participant to uh, produce a uh, EDF file with the original data using Win EEG, and then using that same original data to then uh, artifact out or remove eye movement, create a second EDF file, and then uh, to bring that up to the uh, stage where I was uh, present and discussing things. There was over 40 people in the room. Uh, he kindly brought the data up, and I was able to launch two neuroguides. One on the left that you can see here is the original data, and one on the right is the reconstructed data after removing of, removal of artifact, eye movement artifact. Now, uh, I had uh, actually erased this data uh, and trashed it and uh, emptied the trash uh, because there was uh, human subject information in there at the request of a participant but I did not uh, realize that a copy had actually been made onto a thumb drive. Uh, and I just recently discovered the thumb drive and actually found the, the original data that was presented at the conference. So this allows me to show, to demonstrate and repeat exactly what was done at the Applied Neuroscience Society of Australia meeting in August of 2014. On the left, you can see the EEG uh, of the original EEG, and I'm going to go through it, and you can clearly see eye movement artifact. There's plenty of eye movement. This is an eye, uh, eyes open recording. You can see this artifact, which is not eye movement. That is an electrode pop, which is not uh, actually part of the uh, removal process. So I'm scanning through it just to show uh, that uh, where the artifact is. Now on the right side is the same data. Well, it's the reconstructed artifact uh, data that has been reconstructed to remove eye movement. And you can see it's the same record. Here's an event here that's present in both records, but it's not eye movement, and therefore it's not removed. But the eye movement that subsequently follows this one uh, electrode pop event, you can see is, is absent. And so I'm going to go through that record. You can see no eye movement. 
Uh, here's that feature at uh, 13 seconds that was present in the original data that is not eye movement. You can see it here in the original data, and it's also present in the reconstructed data. But the eye movement is missing. It's gone by the independent components analysis reconstruction. So this is very, very nice to be able to see that you can use an, essentially almost an automatic method. It's not really automatic because you have to subjectively select the, the uh, artifact components that you want to remove. In any case, I'm going to click home and go back to the uh, beginning of this record. And let's look at what happens with phase differences. The way we do that is click View, Dynamic Joint, joint Time Frequency Analysis. I'm going to look at a phase difference here uh, for the spectral values. And I'm going to select at a point in time. I'm going to close this. I'm going to select uh, exactly at one minute. And you can see the uh, phase differences between FP1 and the remainder of the record. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And uh, select the phase, phase differences. Apply. Uh, and then close. And uh, again, one minute, exactly the same point in time. But if you notice, here's delta theta, alpha, beta, and high beta phase differences. Every one of these phase differences is different than the phase differences here. Quite different. For example, here's 2 degrees versus 59 degrees. 90 degrees versus uh, 52 degrees. 36.25 degrees versus 35.3. 26.23 versus 18.8. 125.68 versus 163, 32 degrees versus 37. And, and if you look through these, like 73.84 here in the beta band uh, for channel F, F, uh, P3 and FP1, uh, P3, FP1 in the beta band is 97 degrees. And so every one of these are different. We can go to two seconds and verify that. No matter what instant of time we look at in these two records, we get totally different phase values. Here's 162.71 degrees versus 24.35 degrees. There's just not a single instant throughout this entire record, as we go down, where uh, the phase differences are not altered. So I'm going to go here to this part of the record where you can see the same event. Select 13 seconds exactly. Here's 13 seconds exactly. And again, for example, an F3, FP1, it's 91.84, but it's 2.91 degrees. That's a huge difference. And none of these numbers in the reconstructed, uh, ICA reconstructed uh, time series yield the same time differences or phase differences in the original EEG. This means that the phase and time differences between different parts of the brain in the original EEG has been adulterated has been obliterated. And once these time differences have been altered and manipulated to such an extent, that means that the EEG is no longer a valid, or at least these time series here, is no longer a valid representation of the patient's brain. It's been disconnected. We can also uh, look at it in, using a spectroanalysis. For example, uh, I can open an edit file that I had done earlier and uh, and use the so I edited out artifact, and I can use the exact same edit. There's just two minutes of selected artifact free data, and I, that's done by hand, uh, just uh, uh, deleting the artifact, and uh, and I'll open the same exact uh, artifact uh, .edt file as I did for the original data, and then I'm going to go to report and uh, report selections. And look at coherence and phase only. And I'm going to click generate analyses. And I'm going to move that over so there's a little room for both. And I'm going to do the same over here. Report selections, just coherence and phase. And this is raw scores, not Z scores. This is 100% raw data, it has nothing to do with the normative database. This is purely raw digital data from the original record versus the reconstructed, ICA reconstructed record that shows that they're totally different. So I'm going to go to report, generate analyses, these are raw scores, and show that they are totally different. I'm going to come over here so we can compare the two. For example, this is coherence. It's 7 for FP1, F3, it's 72.82 uh, for uh, the reconstructed.
And if you go through these each of these numbers and, and look at them, and this data is available for people to download and to go through and uh, verify for themselves, or they can get their own data, get raw data, put it through WinEG, ICA reconstruction after removing our uh, eye movement, save the EDF file, launch two neuroguides, and then compare them. And every single time you do this, you'll see that there's complete adulteration of the phase and the coherence. Now I'm going to go down to phase differences. And again, anybody can do this. Go down to phase differences. Approximately the same. Here's 178.81 degrees between the FP1C3. And uh, FP1C3 is a 1.35. Uh, if we want to look at the right hemisphere here, there's 166.24 degrees for FB2C4. It's minus 0.29 degrees. And in fact, if you go through these degrees here of the phase differences, there's not a single one that comes close. There's a few that are kind of close, but very, very few of the original phase differences. This is the phase differences in the original record. This is the, are the phase differences in the reconstructed time series, which is not a valid uh, representation of the subject's brain. In fact, represents a distortion. And anyone can demonstrate this, uh, as I mentioned. And also, people can, there's scientific papers published showing and establishing that the extent to which ICA reconstruction distorts and adulterates the original phase of coherence in, in any EEG record. And one should never use ICA reconstruction uh, for artifact removal of any type because every time one does that, one is distorting the, the original record and adulterating it and invalidating its use for any subsequent analysis. And there's no need to use ICA reconstruction. Today, there are methods that have been used since the 1970s uh, that work quite well to simply delete the artifact. Don't analyze the artifact and just remove it without doing a reconstruction that adulterates the original data.